Welcome to part three of Jappio's scratching and spriting tutorial. In this part, we are now going to start covering the basics of the program we will be using. Now, of course, if you're really, really new to this, or you just don't know all the tricks I do, I think it would be best that we actually cover some of the basics. Now, we're going to use a program I like to call MS Paint. This here is MS Paint, a wonderful little program that is installed in any Windows computer. Now, this is going to be what I'm going to teach you in. Now, before I even start explaining all the tools and different things you can use in this program, I should explain it is not the only program. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, oh, Jamie, you're trying to do some art. Why would you use Microsoft's crappy little free program like MS Paint? You should use, like, Photoshop, you know, have all those cool tools and things like that. You know, it's a big, expensive program. Of course it's going to be better. I would disagree, actually. Photoshop, yes, has a lot of nice bells and whistles. Too bad most of those bells and whistles would actually ruin a sprite. There's a lot of little rules to spriting that... Tools like that would actually kind of wreck. I mean, there are definitely things that Photoshop have above paint that would be useful as writing. There are things like layers and stuff like that that you can do in Photoshop that paint does not do. However, it's not something I think is so important as to do it. I highly recommend if you are making a sprite, please don't make it in Photoshop or GIMP or any of the big art programs. They simply aren't made for spriting. Spriting is a different type of art style. Um you really probably shouldn't need all those tools. Those are things I wouldn't want you touching, especially if you don't know what they do and you're really new to this. Um, it's a lot of confusion and it's really not needed. There are other programs though that you can use for spriting. There are programs like GraphicScale that actually have a lot of cool features that are pretty useful. They're really good for animation and layers and editing and things like that that I do not say you can't use. That is, graphic scale is definitely a powerful spreading program. It's something that I'm just not used to. When I first was introduced to it, I just was like, eh, I'm used to paint. So I stuck with paint. Um, you're also going to have other programs that are probably just as simple as paint that maybe you can use. I don't know everything out there. It's really only paint and graphic scale that I know that are commonly used. Um, other program you should be aware of, there are various programs that are actually for editing in-game sprites. Um, if what you're trying to do is actually put sprites into games, um, there's actually, you should be very well aware of the program known as the one I use. I think there's more. The only one I know or use would be a program called YYCHR. Um, it's essentially a program that, from what I under understand, is for editing in-game sprites. Uh, the only game that I'm currently doing that for at the moment that I don't just have like planned out and paint would be for my Super Poke World. And essentially I do all my spriting for that in that program. Um, it's different than paint. I won't say it's bad, but it definitely takes getting some use to. I mean, it's not a badly set up program, but it is definitely, there's a lot, it's different, and for a lot of in-game sprites, they aren't made to be edited by just the common man, they were set up by spriters at, you know, Nintendo and the other companies and stuff like that, so you'll go through a sheet and it can be pretty confusing, you got a lot of different stuff on that image, and I mean, there's a lot of stuff. They have their own way of drawing and editing, and it, it's something that I have been able to force myself to get used to, but I still don't like it as much as paint. It's actually even arguably more low-tech than paint. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to get sprites into games themselves. I'm going to teach you how to create them in paint. Um, there are tutorials and ways to find out how to do that if that is what you want to do, so I definitely recommend looking around. I mean, if you're doing, like, Mario World, Super Mario World Central. Um, if you're trying to do Pokemon, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff on places like Poke Community and other big Pokemon sites that have a lot of ROM hacks and things like that. So you're able to find ways to do that. However, I'm just letting you know that if I teach you spriting and here in MS Paint and you go, ah, oh, I couldn't use it, well, I warned you. It's You can make them and plan them in MS Paint, and a lot of times there are some, usually there's some way that you can get them over there or they're at least easy re to recreate once you have them in MS Paint, but 
sometimes you will have to do a little bit of extra work to actually get them put into your games. Well, I've explained enough of all that now. Let's actually get to learning and using MS Paint. Now, there's a lot of stuff here. We got your usual files where you can save and open and various small bits of things that you can use for editing. Um, here are all our tools that we get to use, all the different things that we can do. This here is our canvas. Um, as you can see, it's nice big and white and ready to be drawn on. And down here we have our color selection. Um, all pretty self-explanatory if you ask me. Um, uh, let's just start off with going over a couple of the tools, some of the more important ones. Uh, pencil tool is very important. What it is going to do is it's going to draw pixels. It's actually perfect for spriting because whenever you make one small click in an area, it makes exactly one pixel. And then that's what we're going to want to be able to do. We want to use those small little pixels. Now, obviously, it's not as, you know, there's a lot of other stuff. Um, we get things like the paintbrush tool, which rather than just make one pixel, they make a large pixels. And we can make uh, squares and circles with that and even weird little line things. I don't think I've ever used this. These, these are kind of weird, but neato at the same time, too. Um, along with that, um, an important one, magnifying glass. It zooms in, zooms out for us. Got a little bar here you can use, and or you can just click and right click to do that. Uh, we have things like the paint bill, paint bucket. Those fill the screen, or fill in the selection. So, for example, if we had like an enclosed circle with lines, we can go up to that and fill it in. And since it was completely sealed off, it filled that area. Of course, be careful if you don't fill it off and you try to just fill in the inside, it gets all the way out and that's no good. Uh, we have an eraser, which obviously erases whatever we have, so we can have an image there and we can just erase it away. Um, let's say you need to get a specific color, there's this little um, extractor tool, um, eyedropper type tool, which essentially pulls a color up from the image and then makes it as your primary usable color. Uh, we have some tools that you'll probably never use like the spray paint can. Uh, spray paint can acts like a spray paint can. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's like randomly generated within a certain area though so for something exact as we're doing we don't want that. Um, another nice tool, we can, exit, we can enter text onto the images. Uh, we actually have some of the pre-built things here. We have a line tool that makes straight lines. We have a curve tool that makes curves. We have things that make circles, rounded squares, straight squares, and just in general this weird thing that makes other shapes. Just any shape with straight lines all connected. Um, for the most part, you probably won't be using spray paint can, you probably won't be using curvy line or rounded rectangle or the circle tool. They can sometimes be used to give you a brief idea, but for the most part, when we're doing things that have like a curve, we actually want to do them by hand or do them exact. I'll explain more about that later when I get to circles and stuff, but for now, just letting you know, you're probably not going to need those tools. And uh, finally, we have the tools up here. Um, let's say we have something created, and we want to move it around. We can then do that. Uh, that's what this tool there does. Let's just move it, or we can move part of the image. And we can try and combine them together, move them about. A lot of cool things that does. And the one next to it, the one that isn't in a square, just lets us create our own selection and our own shape. Well, now with the tools out of the way, um, I'm going to explain the colors a bit. Um, down here on the bottom of the screen, we have a large selection of different colors, uh, every color under the rainbow and more. These are just the basic ones that will your paint will probably have. Um, you are free to edit them. If, let's say, you don't want to use red or something, or like you want a different shade of red, uh, double-click it, or double-click one of the colors you don't need. You have a couple more choices in the basic color selection. However, you also can create a bunch of custom colors. Uh, just select one of the squares, define custom colors, and boom, you have this giant sheet of different colors that you can edit darkness on and get, you know, you can just drag your little mouse around down here or click and 
you know, find something. Um, maybe you want a weird green color that's kind of dark. Um, if you know number color stuff, I don't even know what this is called. You can edit that by hand. Um, then just something like add custom colors, and boom, we have this cool shade of green that you might want. And now moving on, um, right here in the left side of the color area, you have what is called the primary and secondary color. Um, these are going to be the two colors that are assigned to your mouse. Essentially, at first, what you're going to notice with them is the first top primary color here is what happens if you take one of your tools and you draw with it. And that's going to be the primary color if you use the left click. However, if we set something like, let's set our green up on the right click, you actually create and if you right click on the screen with your drawing tool you'll actually create that secondary color um, there's two good uses for this one if you're doing something that you know you're using two different colors at once and you want to switch back between them a lot um, that's useful another thing this is useful um, going up to that eraser tool can be tiring sometimes so let's say we you know we're drawing with our paintbrush tool and we're drawing you know these big black lines um, if we have our secondary color um, for example this time white we have it as white and our background is white it will actually let us just we can just use the right click to essentially use this as an eraser tool sometimes it doesn't work but if you're just editing one small little pixel or two it's gonna generally be what you have to do now more things that we can do with actually primary and secondary colors um, that's pretty useful let's say we have this drawn image of this crazy squiggle and then we have this crazy scribble and let's say we want to put them on top of each other. Now, if you haven't tried, if you don't know it too much, you'll take, you know, your one scribble and try to put it over. It completely covers it up. Uh, whatever box you have looks like it completely covers it up. Uh, that's where the second option came in that you might have noticed before. Um, the first choice means the object that you have selected is very solid and covers it up. However, if we move on to this second choice, that actually makes it so it's transparent. Uh, the transparency is actually decided by your secondary color. Whatever you have in that second little box, so the secondary color, that will be your transparent thing. So in our selected zone, since white is our secondary color, white is the transparent color. So anything white in our selected area actually becomes transparent, and that's why you can see through it. Um, a lot of actually neat things you can do about that is, let's say you have a crazy yellow background going on part of the way you can actually make it so it's not just white that's transparent. You actually make it. And see the areas that we left white now, since white's no longer the transparent, are actually solid and you can't see through them. Um, there's a lot of neat tools and things that uses that we'll have for you. So definitely look into that. Um, oh, another thing you might be noticing I'm doing here is to get rid of an image. I've actually been just selecting it and moving it off the page. Um, it's just something I've grown used to. Some people will select and you can actually hit the delete key or some people will go in by hand and try and race it themselves or if it's a solid enough mass you can use the paint bucket tool too to get rid of it if it's all connected one last little tip about the primary and secondary that you might see me do um, one form of spriting that you need to know is known as recoloring that you'll want to know so if you're trying to recolor an MS paint you can go in and by hand and individually change every one of them or you can use the eraser tool um, the eraser cool act tool actually does more than just erase colors. Um, if you just normal left click, it will essentially turn everything to your secondary color. Like right now, since I have this yellow as my secondary, and I, if I left click, it just basically acts like it's just coloring with yellow. Uh, normally, you would have it set up to your background color if you wanted to erase with it. However, a second tool, if you right click with it, it will actually do something pretty amazing. Um, first, let's just show you though what happens if you do it wrong. Let's say we have black selected as our primary. Nothing on our image is black. We go in, we right click, and we drag about. As you can see, no changes are happening. However, let's switch it to the color of our giant blob here. If we switch our primary to the color of the blob and make our secondary something different, let's say yellow, and we actually right click through it, as you can see, the green slowly turns to yellow. However, the background doesn't. Nothing else does. We can actually even throw in, let's just real quick, throw in some other colors into our blob like that, but we still want to only change that green color, completely ignores everything else, and just changes that one thing to that. Another use for that, let's say we have this cool image, but on this weird scribbly background. 
Um, we take that weird scribbly background's color, we change our secondary then to our background color, we can actually get rid of all that nasty blotch underneath, leaving only our main image on top. That's actually going to be something I'm probably going to teach you later on, is actually that's going to be very useful. Another cool tool that you have, if you go into view and zoom, you can actually even select this thing called show thumbnail, and it will open a little box for you that will actually show you your image on normal scale. So let's say we're all zoomed in and, you know, we can't really see the full image when we're like this. But since we have our little thumbnail open, we have a nice little live thing that's showing us what it looks like on a normal view. So even though we've got our big blocky lines here, over there it looks like what the final product will look like to a normal person who isn't zoomed in. Um, another useful tool, same menu under zoom, we have a show grid. Show grid does what it does. It shows a grid. Um, something I don't use, but you can definitely use. It depends what kind of visual person you are. However, you know, this makes it so you can exactly see all the grids and where things line up. And it definitely has its uses depending on who you are. Um, a couple more things you might see me do throughout this video um, that you can't see. Okay. Is as I'm drawing a line, you will sometimes see it where I get partway through and then it disappears. Um, that's pretty simple to do. Um, I'm left clicking with my mouse to draw this black, draw this line here. Um, and then part way through, while still holding the left button on the side, I don't like this line, I want to get rid of it. While still holding down the left arrow, but you can't do this once it's already done, but as I'm holding it, I right click. If you right click while you're drawing something, it will actually completely undo it. Um, another thing you'll see me do, I'll have an image, and let's say I just want to make a copy of it. Rather than doing this, right click, selecting it, right clicking, and hitting like copy, I'll instead probably just go over it, hit control, hold down control, and then left click it over. And this will actually let me create copies of things. Another thing with your canvas is you want to, you can actually change its size. If you want a smaller area for some reason, you can do that. If you wanted something larger, you just click and drag, you can change the vertical. Um, this will be important for later on when you're saving your thing. Um, you don't want a lot of empty white space, so you'll actually want to close things up and crop it around your image. Well, that's the end of part three. Hopefully by now you know how to use MS Paint. If you don't know MS Paint, you're probably going to run into some problems now. Basically though, get ready everyone, we are actually diving in, we're going to be doing the actual spriting next with forms and shape and things like that in part 4.